Greetings in the name of Christ and welcome to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning in Eastertide. Uh, we are glad that you've joined us today and we are pleased to be able to offer this service of worship again from the sanctuary, at least on my part. Uh, we are in prayer this week for many who are suffering. We are remembering in our hearts and prayers first responders and I hope you will join me in this service in remembering all the people who are um, dealing with this virus today as uh, we worship together. Uh, it's been our tradition, if we can call it that now, to pass a virtual piece uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So when we do pass the piece, I invite you to reach out to three people either by email or text or maybe even a phone call or FaceTime uh, to extend the hand of Christ and uh, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. We come before you, O God, in Easter joy. We come before you seeking to be people of the resurrection. Be known among us. Grant the assurance of your presence, your love, and your renewing power. Through your word and spirit, reveal your purpose to us. The tomb is empty, and death has been defeated for all the earth. Glory be to God. Please pray with me. Gracious God, in this season of resurrection, we gather in the hope of new life. Come and stand among us, even as the risen Christ stood among his disciples. Open our eyes to new glimpses of your truth. Open our minds to new understandings of your word. Open our hearts to new avenues of witness, bearing the good news of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In the light of the resurrected Christ, we see the sin of the world and of our hearts. Trusting in God's saving love, 
Let us make our confession. Let us pray. God, we confess that there are many hours when we are not mindful of your presence. We give up the comfort and avoid the challenge that comes from your word and spirit. Forgive us and restore us to the joy of knowing you. May Christ be known among us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. In the act of suffering, Christ absorbed our sins. In unfailing life, an unfailing love, Christ forgives our failures. In Christ's resurrection, God promises acceptance, assures pardon, and affirms eternal life. Your sins are forgiven, says Christ. Go in peace. Let us pray. Living God, as the risen Christ came to the disciples on the Emmaus Road, may your word enter into us by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we may recognize our beloved companion and believe. Amen. The epistle reading this morning is from 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. If you invoke as father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
gospel text this morning is from the 24th chapter of Luke. I'm beginning with the 13th verse and reading through verse 35. I invite you to listen for the word of God. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost, almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus. Two of them. Who were the two? Mother and son? Friends? Husband and wife? Father and daughter? Tradition is named only one, and the name is questionable, ambiguous. Perhaps that is best. We fill in the characteristics and the personality. We can paint upon their silhouettes something of ours. One is named. Maybe you are the other. Maybe I am. That very day, two of them were going to the village of Emmaus, and one of them wears your face. One of them, at least, you know. One of them sits easily in the shoes that you wear. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. Are they just leaving Jerusalem? You know what that's like, don't you? There comes a time to leave. You've heard the saying, 
thing too often and again and again. Every month at the meeting or every week on Zoom or every day at breakfast, you have heard it again and again. It is not interesting. It is not important. It is not funny. Not anymore. Not every time. You have had it. Dear God in heaven, if she says that one more time, I'm gonna. Or if he says that again, what this country needs and what this family needs and what this church needs and what you need. And there she or he goes again. They just have to say it one more time. And you know, it will be said the next time and the next. So it is time to leave or cause a rude confrontation or go crazy. Seven miles is not far enough. Are these two going home, back home? Not just getting away, but returning home? You know what that's like too. It does not matter how old you are, how mature, how filled with faith, how stuffed with success, it doesn't matter. When you get home, back to where you grew up, or helped others grow up, you are a kid again, the parent again, the sister or the brother, all again. Your needs, your personality, hopes, dreams, and desires are all smothered beneath this role. You are father, mother, child. It's all right for two and a half days, but Lordy, it is too much for a third day. Dad, do you remember the time when? Or mom, could you give me a couple dollars for? Or son, have you taken care of that matter about which I emailed? Oh God, it's time to leave again. Time to get back on the road, even the Emmaus Road. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. It is not a happy trip. Whether they are getting away or going home, it is not a happy trip, not on this road. It is uphill all the way, regardless of geography. It is away from disappointment or back to something you left long ago. And though you talk along the way, it is the same old tired conversation. You fill up the bowl with it, you stick the spoon in it, you stir it around, but it's the same old bowl filled with the same old stuff, the bits and pieces of shattered hopes and dreams, a pinch of despair, a dash of disappointment, Mix well, and voila, it's the same thing again. You have to have it when you leave, and you have it when you get there. Where did we go wrong? Where did we take the wrong turn? Do you think we were bad parents? Have we failed to live up to our values as sons and daughters? Why did it turn out this way? What happened? A prisoner of war tells of seeing a kind old tired worm woman fall out of line. When she failed to respond, he shot her. The man asked the other guard, why her? Why in God's name, her? And the guard replied, why anybody? Why anybody? Why that family? Why your family? Why you? Why COVID-19? Why unemployment? Why this? Why? Isn't that what we talk about? Always talk about our family and friends, our minor triumphs and major failures, our what ifs and if onlys and maybes. Where did we go wrong in our efforts to understand as we travel this road? But we had hoped, always we had hoped, 
Every time we failed, every time we messed up, when the text woke us in the middle of a bad dream, when the email came the next day and we already knew what it said before we opened it. You muster up the courage to tell someone you love them, but he or she does not love you back with the same depth, at the same loving glow that you have, or with the same needs and desires. Or he or she thinks you are all right, they just don't want to hurt your feelings. You might have an attractive sister or brother or know someone who does. Your company is enjoyed, but love? Not the way you love him or her. Not that way. You want something desperately. A promotion or a job. A daughter to turn around and get her life in order. A son to take full advantage of the education for which you are paying a marriage to work out, a place to find some friends later in life, something to do in your retirement that is useful because, God, you are tired of pickleball and online international chess. But it does not work out. None of it. You are back to kicking dust on the Emmaus Road, talking about what's been happening, hoping again for something different. Haven't you traveled this road and hoped at a time when someone you loved and counted on died? You can barely make it, barely put one foot in front of the other, barely tolerate your grief. Even and everything about you says, don't get close to me, leave me alone, don't ask me how I'm doing, don't tell me you are sorry, I'm barely hanging on, don't tip the balance. I may crack. You and a whole lot of others in this world are feeling that right now. We had hoped in couples or alone or together in groups of friends. We had hoped. We walked the path alone. Why, I used to have so many friends. I used to have so many. I used to have so. I used to. I used. We had hoped. We had a vision of a world filled with beauty and green gardens rather than streets with junk. We had hoped for a world where neighbors greeted one another instead of passing frightened with masks on. We had hoped for a world in which good wins and evil would be defeated, where the old were respected and the young obedient. We had hoped, yet that is not the way it turned out. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel, that he was going to redeem me or you or to save him or her from the virus or cancer or failure or divorce or pain and suffering. But in spite of our hopes, that is not the way it turned out. What is the conversation you are holding with each other as you walk? Oh, good Lord, must we go through this again? We don't even want to have to explain it anymore. We don't even know how to explain it ourselves. Most of all, we don't want to explain it to some meddlesome stranger asking stupid questions. Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened? Of course he knows. He is the one to whom these things happened. He is the one who suffered and died. He is the one who was raised this very day so that we might know that death, as strong as it is, is not the last event. Of course he knows. We know who he is. Familiar with this narrative from childhood, we know. We also know he will make himself known to these two in the breaking of the bread. We know. But do we really know? Are we any better at recognizing him when he moves up next to us along the road than are these two? Don't we also miss him because our eyes are kept from recognizing him? Because of sadness 
or preoccupation with our loss or lot in life? Suffering is not God's way of breaking our pride, of paying us back when we miss the mark, or of letting us know that God is powerful. No. Suffering is the stranger we all know too well, moving up next to us and opening our eyes and helping us to learn and identify and to love others, all the others who suffer. Dorothy Soule says, God is our capacity to love. God, who is our capacity to suffer and to love, draws close to us in the stranger. Sometimes the stranger comes in the midst of a bitter defeat when everyone has deserted. Sometimes at graveside or late at night when we are in our solitary room. The stranger arrives as the song quieting a crowded bar, rides with us on a late night drive as the sun sets or the moon rises. The stranger's voice is the voice of a child, a scream, the voice of anguish rising within the ranks of first responders. He is the stranger who joins us on the road we travel. Stay with us, said the two on the road. Stay with us, for it is evening and the day is far spent. No one can do that for us. No one can do that for you. Oh, the story can be told. I and others can tell how the stranger came to be known to us in the breaking of bread in the cry of a needy child, in staff members working round the clock to feed the homeless during a pandemic. The stranger becomes known to us in the hug of a friend, an encouraging word. But only one can do what you can do. Invite the stranger to stay this very day. Stay with us. For it is evening, and the day is far spent. So the stranger went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed and broke it. And he gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they, you know the rest of the story. Now live it. To God be the glory. Amen.
Please join me in the affirmation of faith. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved, if we hold it fast. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the turn to God in prayer. We thank you, redeeming God, for the glorious message that you bring new hope out of despair, resurrection out of defeat, and new life out of death. You call dry bones to dance. You give living water so that new life blossoms. You urge flowers to push their way through the winter-hardened soil. We bring before you the dead and dried-out places in our lives, that through your touch we may discover newness of life. Forgotten dreams, lapsed intentions, hardened resentments, griefs to which we cling, like children who cling to a worn but cherished toy or blanket. These we hand over to you, knowing that you will return them mended, washed, renewed, transformed. We bring before you the places in our lives and in our world where despair reigns unchallenged. With grief, we bring our concerns for this pandemic all over the world where it cycles and seems to go on and on. Point us toward actions, however small, which lead to a more hopeful future for ourselves and for our world. Gracious God, we thank you that you walk beside us as we journey through life. Because you are with us, we accept each new day with its joys and sorrows as a gift. Because you are with us, we gain courage to meet the challenge of the day, choosing life and not death as we move through time. As you raise Jesus from the dead, raise us to new life, day by day. For we pray in Jesus' name, the prayer he taught his disciples when praying together to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, 
as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are so grateful in this time that you have uh, continued to give to the church. You may do that by going to our website and clicking on the Donate Now button, or by um, sending a check-in or making a transfer from your bank. We are grateful for all the support, and let us now pray and give thanks for the gifts that are given. Generous God, you are our portion and our cup. In you our hearts are glad, our souls rejoice, and our bodies rest. Bless and multiply our offerings and pledges, that they may bring the joy of your presence more deeply into the world. Through the risen Christ we pray. Amen. And now let us go forth into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return to no person evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all persons, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the intimate company of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and forevermore. Amen.